Welcome back to the Good Old Boys YouTube channel. Today we're going to be digging into the portals on this tractor. So we got a few bearings to replace. On the other side, the spindle that comes up out of there is broken off, so we have to replace that. Let's get going on this. First, I'm going to take the tie rod off. Next step is to take this top bolt out. So you just want to be careful here because the whole portal will fall out. Tap this thing downward depending um, on uh, how crusty your portal is. This has been apart once before, so obviously you can see it came apart pretty easily. Some of you guys that have been through this before may have noticed I didn't pull an axle out of here. Wasn't able to run the axle. I had to take the axle out so this could freewheel. Here's the other side. This you can see is the shaft that broke off. We're gonna start on this side by taking the tie rod off of here. There we go. Notice how I'm leaving the nut on here uh, in order to get this broken free. You don't wanna be hammering on the ends of the threads of the tie rod down out of here just like on the other side yep just exactly like the other side what I was talking about here about the top bearing not being in the best shape um, it, it's doesn't have much wiggle room but uh, it's pretty crusty well, I think what we're going to do to make this easy is just take the rest of this portal off even though the axle is going to come with it it should be fine i'll be able to take this to the parts washer and clean everything up a whole lot better that way all right so this is what the other side looked like before i removed the axle shaft so basically uh like I said before, there is normally an axle shaft on the other side. There is actually one of these washers uh, on the very top here on both sides. So don't forget to put that back on there. This has an L on it. This is your left hand side. Um, the left hand goes on the side with all the steering components. So the portals are both draining out. I did want to show you guys, actually all of this stuff is marked left and right. So again, the steering side of the tractor is gonna be the left-hand stuff. Um, so it's the stuff with the L stamped into it. So actually, uh, not only the top part of the portal has an L on it, but the bottom side of the portal has an L as well, right here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Also, the steering horn has an L on it. Then the right side of the tractor, the upper portal has an R on it and the lower portal also has an R on it and the steering horn has an R as well on that too. So we're at the parts washer now. I'm not gonna disassemble this part of the portals. Everything feels pretty solid. It doesn't feel crunchy or any of that. So uh, I'm pretty happy with the bearings in here, but we do need to clean the portal out. Obviously, you guys can see there's a little bit of mud water in there. Um, we're going to clean out all the bearings, including the axle shaft and axle bearing. Um, so I'm going to take care of all that. I'm just going to show you guys this one side, but basically I'm going to do the same thing to both sides. All right, so now we're back out in the barn. Um, when this bearing completely grenaded, the outer race 
uh, got stuck up in here or still stuck in here. So um, what we're gonna do is remove these gears. So I found out there's actually a couple different ways you can do this. So um, the way I'm doing it, I think is probably the easiest way to get the bearing out. But uh, I don't recommend you guys doing this because you could ruin your gears. So down in here, uh, let's see here. Flip you guys this way down in here. There's uh, kind of the needle bearings in the center, but on the edge, there's the gear that you can kind of tap on. So that's how I've been removing this bearing or how I've removed it before. Um, the other way you can do this is if you look down in here, flip you guys this way again. If you look down in here, if you rotate this around, there's a snap ring right here and you can take that off, the gears separate, and then you'll just have the bearing in the housing. But uh, in order to get the maximum space, I'm going to take the bearing and the gears out of the housing. Should be uh, pretty easy to get this out of here. Let's see, I'm going to start on this side. Like I said, it should come out of there pretty easy. So one little side note for you guys. Um, when that bearing on the top falls apart, it falls down in here, goes through the teeth and gets jammed between the gear and the inside case on this thing. Um, so what you wanna do uh, actually, or how I had to do it was remove this snap ring and then press this spline part through. Uh, and then that freed up this top gear and then I was able to get the bearing out. So um, if you guys have a bearing fall apart, um, that's the way to get it out. But there is the outer race, like I said, stuck down in there. So uh, probably gonna get a little uh, cutoff wheel on the Dremel and start cutting this out of here. All right guys, so a little bit of work with the Dremel and a chisel and a hammer. And you guys can see I actually cut both sides. So there's a cut along here and a diagonal cut along here. And hopefully you can see this is all chipped out here. And if we look at the other side, I chipped a little bit off, but this thing is pretty much ready to come out of here. So I've got a uh, pick and we're gonna pick this thing out of here. Right, so that sucker's out of there. Okay, so it's back to the parts washer for this stuff. I'm just gonna get it cleaned up. All right guys, so looking through this stuff, it all looks pretty good. The big bearings are all fine. Now, there are these small needle bearings. Um, the bottom one looks okay. Um, but the top one has seen better days. So we will be ordering a needle bearing for that. So I suppose the next step is gonna be removing the needle bearing from in here. Yeah. So everybody hates it when a needle bearing falls apart, but um, these are pretty easy to deal with, so I don't mind too much. Uh, in case you guys were wondering, there is a spacer in there. And then of course the other needle bearing in the bottom. But uh, long story short, we should be able to get the part numbers for this needle bearing and replace it. I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart. Uh, luckily it's sliding pretty easily, but this bearing is stuck on here. So I'm gonna have to get it popped off.
back at the parts washer. I'm gonna clean this up and we'll see what we got. All right guys, so it's looking like the same deal on this. Um, I think the bottom bearing is fine. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look real rough or anything. Um, it might have a little bit of wear on it, but I'm not super concerned about it. For the most part, it's pretty smooth and working well. Now the top one on the other hand is not in the best of shape. So we figured out we need two needle bearings. Uh, we definitely need two of these regular type bearings. So the good news is we can get a measurement off of both of these um, inner and outer race as well as off of the shaft. Figure out what bearing that is. I'll throw that on the screen for you guys and I'll also um, throw the seal on the screen for you guys. I'm also gonna show you guys uh, what size they are. So really quickly here, Basically, we have 47, roughly. We have about 19. The shaft is about 20. And this is millimeters, of course. This stuff is all metric, guys. So when you're buying parts, you should be searching for metric parts. Now the seal, the diameter on it is gonna be 30 it looks like 29 or 30 and then the seal uh, pretty much is the same size or is the same size as the bearing shaft so um, yeah pretty much 20 let me get you guys some measurements on the seal there we go so here's our seal so again about 30 so you're gonna want to order a 30 millimeter outer diameter seal we'll check that on here yep 30 and then her diameter uh again as we were saying before was 20 to match the shaft so again guys you can find all the measurements specs and links to the parts that i bought in the description box below continuing on the seal so this is a 20 millimeter inner diameter seal the shaft is supposed to be 20 millimeters um, and this shaft is, you guys can see how clean and how straight it is and all that. This is good to go. So no problems there. Okay. Now we come over here to the right side shaft. I don't know if you guys can even see that or not, but this shaft is kind of ate up right where the seal goes. So this seal is quite a bit loose. Uh, granted, I understand this is worn out, but uh, regardless, if you put a 20 millimeter seal on here with how far this is worn down, it's just gonna leak immediately. So I have one 20 millimeter by 30 by seven coming for the good shaft. And I checked and made sure you can get them, but I got a 19 by 30 by seven. So the only difference basically is the inner diameter is 19 instead of 20. So it's a little bit tighter for this worn out shaft. A little PSA for everybody. Um, there are shims in here So totally didn't even notice that this was here about just something for you guys to watch out for so hopefully you guys can see that movement There's one there um, And there's also one in the same exact place on the other portal So you don't want to lose those obviously so just pay attention to that This side we got to replace this steering shaft on um, so I don't know how hard that's gonna be, but we're about to find out. It's got this little hole, and I believe, yeah, it goes over top of a um, roll pin. Um, and I'm not sure, it doesn't really have a keeper. I don't know why it wouldn't spin. Anyways, it's supposed to go over top of this keeper here. So this is this side of the portal, the other side, is what the wheel goes on to or the rim bolts to so we're gonna just take this off um, also bottom side of this is flat the top side that you look down on has these two like u-shaped cuts out of it and I'm assuming this will come out of here with a couple bolts um, so we're gonna start there
sweet. All right, so we have a couple things to do here. First, I'm gonna tap out these holes and just make sure they're good and clear. Um, I bought this from Southern Farm Equipment, which they are a really great company. They have a lot of good parts for the Yanmar 1500. Um, and this is one of them, and I'm not sure if this is a factory part. I'm guessing, I'm guessing maybe it's not. But, um, I mean, at least it works. It's just a tight fit. Boy, yeah, it's a tight fit. I've got all the bolts on here now, but uh, just definitely a little bit hard to start some of the bolts for sure. I would say that the holes are not perfectly lined up, unfortunately. So it might just be a manufacturing thing that needs looked at, but, uh, but you know, overall, it's really great that you can buy a brand new part for something that's how many years old now. All right guys, so last thing I'm gonna do is kind of halfway assemble this thing. Um, so don't forget this washer, the hole goes towards the back side of the portal. We're gonna leave everything like this until we get the parts. So I'll see you then. All right guys, so we got our parts in. So we have the two needle bearings. These are the 6204 RS bearings. And of course we have our seals. So like I said, one we got in just a slightly smaller size. So we have a 19 by 30 by, uh, I think it was seven. And then this is a 20 by 30 by seven. All right, so we're gonna start with the right-hand side, which as we said before, is the non-steering side of the tractor. So we're gonna, all right. We're gonna clean off this remaining gasket. We're gonna actually go ahead and tap these holes. So this is one of the bolts that goes in there, M10 by 1.5. Got uh, all the bolts set up over there. So these are what hold the wheel on, there's four of them. So these are an M14, um, but they're a fine thread. 
this only has the 2.0 so uh, i'm not sure what the fine thread would be i think it's probably like a 1.5 or 1.75 uh, thread pitch if you had a pair of calipers you can measure it pretty quick and easy <laughs> All right, so one last run through the parts washer to get all the metal filings and whatnot off of here. And then this side will be ready to be put back together. We're back from the parts washer with this piece. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the lower portal. So this is the non-steering right side. The shaft is a little worn. So this is the side that we're putting the 19 millimeter seal in. So I'm gonna put some gear oil on here. We're going to uh, put the bearings in it and the seal before we put them in here. So seal first. So I'll put it in here and I'll show you guys. So that's how I'm gonna set my seal. So here's our bearing. It should press in there pretty much flush, as you guys can see. Um, so that's going to be pretty much the end of the video for now. I'm going to go ahead and put the um, top needle bearings in these things, get those replaced, and get everything pretty much put back together. Um, but unfortunately, I'm out of storage space on my phone, so I'm going to have to end the video here. All right, guys. So here's the conclusion on the portals. As you guys can see, both sides are on there. Everything worked out really well. Um, as you guys can hear, the gears are working. Both sides are working great. Um, the bearings and everything went together really well. I uh, ended up cleaning off the surfaces. I used the high torque gray RTV on this and tightened the bolts down pretty good. Um, the steering is working really well now with the steering horn on there. Um, the uh, the steering horn here fit really well over the splines. It's a nice tight fit. Um, so that worked out really well. Uh, one other thing here to note on this side, um, there's two washers. I don't know if you guys caught that earlier in the video or not. You have the shim washer and then you have kind of like, I don't know, a regular washer. Um, they're both the same diameter, but the inside diameter is smaller on uh, on this top washer okay so that's pretty much it um, if you like the video don't forget to rate comment and subscribe also if you're looking for any of the part numbers or specs on the bearings that we used in the video don't forget to go down to the description box below and also if you guys are looking for other videos for example i'm going to have a video on this rear bearing getting it changed out uh, that'll also be linked in the description box below so uh, like i said there'll be other videos along the same lines on the same tractor in the description box below so don't forget to go check that out so that's going to be it for this one guys we'll catch you on the next one peace